Hey guys, it's Christian here from Core Electronics. Today we're going to be assembling Circuit 1B from Project Set 1 in the SparkFun Inventors Kit version 4.0. So similarly to our last circuit, uh, Circuit 1A, we'll be using an LED, a resistor, and some jumper wires, but now we have an added analog component called a potentiometer. So a potentiometer is a three pin variable resistor and the way that we'll be connecting it up is between zero and five volts. Now, between zero and five volts, it will create a voltage divide on the third center pin, and that center pin will give a quantized digital reading to the pin that we're gonna connect it to, analog zero. And essentially what that does is it just tells us where this position is, where it is turned to. So, that is what we're going to be using to create the delay that we had set in the previous one to 2000 milliseconds. So connecting it up, we use this flush side and we keep that closest to that insulated centerpiece. We're going to connect the positive pin. Well, it's, it's not polarized, so we're just assuming a positive pin, but we're going to connect the top pin to the positive power rail and we're going to connect the bottom pin to the negative power rail. Then we're going to connect this blue or we're going to use this blue jump wire to connect the center pin to the analog zero port and we're going to connect the power bus. So we're going to have plus five volts connected to the positive and ground connected to the negative. Now, as mentioned in the previous video, it's important to connect the LED in the right fashion. And the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna connect the long leg to A2 and the short leg to A1. Now, we're also gonna use the resistor as we did in the previous one to limit the current. So E2 to F2, it's gonna bridge that little gap. And then we're going to connect E1 to the negative rail. And we're going to connect J2 to pin 13. Okay, now that that's all connected, we're able to actually connect the breadboard to the computer and open up the Arduino IDE. Now, since it's an analog component, uh, that is one new thing that we've got in the program, or in the, in the circuit, and we're going to add another new programming element. So we'll see here that in our setup, we still want the pin mode of pin 13 to be an output, and these analog pins, we don't actually have to specify whether they're input or output because they are uh, inherently inputs. So at the top of the loop function, we want to write um, something that is going to store the value of the current potentiometer position or the current potentiometer value. So we're going to call that in pot pin. And then we're going to close it. So pot pin will be equal to analog read. So we use the function analog read because it's not reading a high or a low. It's reading a value from 0 to 123 or 0 to 5 volts. So using that analog read function, it'll give us more degrees of freedom in actually what it's registering. So we're going to go analog read A0. And that means that every time this loop is done, it's going to read in that value. Then in our delay that we've written before, we're going to write pot pin and pot pin. Now what this means is that the value stored in pot pin that's just been read will be now the value that's used in the delay. And since that's in milliseconds and it's going up to 1023, that means that we can have up to 1.023 seconds delay and we can have down to essentially no delay. So once that's done, we're going to file save as, and this will be circuit 1B. 
then we will upload that sketch. So I'll first compile it and make sure that it's got no errors or bugs in the code. It's uploading. And now that it's done uploading, you'll see that as we turn this, the delay between will become longer. And if we turn it downwards, it'll become a lot shorter until it's flashing really quickly. So that there has been circuit 1B. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next tutorial where we'll do circuit 1C.